All right, we are headed out to a sports bar that a buddy of mine works at, and he saves bottles for me. Um, crucial people to know if you want an abundance of free glass. Um, so, and it's also cool if you make them something every now and then to say thanks. So today my buddy's getting this cool salsa bowl that I made out of a Patron bottle. Hopefully he eats salsa, or he can fill it up with M&Ms, or whatever. So, we are headed out, and I'll talk to you in a bit. I'm a smoker, I'm a midnight joker. I sure don't want Alright, we are here. It's about a 20 minute ride to get over to this place, but it's totally worth the drive for the amount of glass that my buddy gives me. Let's go. I'm gonna go park by the back door. We don't have to carry all this stuff out through the restaurant. Back in a minute. Okay, so they saved me a few bottles. A whole bunch of few. Holy shit. All right. So I got all the bottles in the back seat. Should be a, an interesting story to get out of getting in trouble if I get pulled over. Uh, sir, can you explain why there's about 60 empty liquor and bottles in the back of your car? Uh, yes, sir. All right. Talk to you when we get back to the palace. Bye. Should I shave or should I grow? Should I shave or should I grow now? Should I shave or should I grow now? If I shave, there will be stubble. If I grow, this shit will be double. Okay, so we're in the shop and today's tutorial is going to be pretty cool. It's um, I'm going to create three different items out of one bottle. Um, you can actually make two out of one, keep the two, but there's going to be three different items total. Um, Grey Goose bottles are awesome. These things are actually on sale on eBay. Empty Grey Goose bottles because they know the people that do what I do and hopefully doing what you're doing if you're into this glass crafting thing. You can do a lot of stuff with these. Uh, reason being, it's not a sticker. Uh, this is actual frosted glass. Uh, this is actually a factory baked paint job uh, emblems on there or designs, whatever you want to call them. And they're also very thick, so when you run them through a saw, the chances of them cracking or exploding are not too high. So, what are we going to make? Greg Goose Rocks glasses. These are pretty cool. These are on Etsy.com, not mine, but the rest of the world that's making these things, and they're selling for like $25, $30 for a set of four. Um, what's not on Etsy is something that I made, and if you haven't seen our uh, Faster Plants Hydroponics, um, go over to that channel, it's pretty cool. Um, that's one of my other channels, but this is what we're going to make out of it. This is a wandering Jew plant. It is alive. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to see the root structure in there, but this has been growing inside of these fire clay pebbles with just water for about a month. They were sticking up out of the rocks this far when I first started it and as you can see it's grown up pretty well and there's actually even new growth these smaller ones that are starting to come out but the coolest part of this bottle creation is going to be this I'm going to turn off the light so you can see this thing better that is a Grey Goose Hurricane Lantern and there is actually a candle hanging inside of this thing by a chain brightness so no bottom candle hanging in it and there's a little vent hole in the back uh, somewhere over here where'd it go right there so that the candle doesn't go out so without further ado let's go get cutting and I'll show you how to get this done all right so the saw is set the fence 
just to cut off that part there. So we end up with the goose glass and uh, the planter and the hurricane lantern. So we've got that set up, so let's start cutting. Safety glasses. Don't take a chance on this. You only got two sets of eyes. It only takes a half a second to go blind using one of these. Remember, let the blade do the work. Don't force the glass through it or you're going to tear this thing up. Always pour a little bit of water all over it. Get the little glass shards out of it. Again, nice and slow. shaving literally just millimeters off of it at a time. Alright, that's pretty close. And now it's even. Make sure even after you're done cutting that you rinse off your saw because not just the little shards of glass, but there's actually like glass dust that's gonna be on here, and when that stuff dries, it's not very easy to get off. For the vent, it's a much bigger hole. What I'm using is a hole saw in a drill press. I'm using a bucket of water here. Uh, do this at your own risk. I'm sure this is probably dangerous. I can't wait to see how many comments I get about getting electrocuted, etc. but this is how I do it, and it works. Um, basically a hole saw is, uh, it's a bit that is a pipe. The outside of it is bonded with um, some kind of a heavy duty epoxy or something that's pretty heat resistant, and within that is a mixture of uh, little chipped um, industrial strength diamonds. Not the diamonds that go in jewelry, but these are these are different. These These aren't expensive like that. One of these bits costs about 25 bucks. Um, if you don't have it submerged or have constant water on it, the bit will get incredibly hot very fast. The um, element that's holding the diamond bits to the metal, it will degrade instantly and they all come off and then you're left with a, a dull hole saw. So let's get to cutting. Whoops, we need some. Alright, I've got the bottle in there. I've got my safety glasses on. The bit's underwater. We still don't have power. Okay. I did actually just dry my hands off before I grabbed that thing, in case you're wondering. Alright. Nice and slow.
little cloud that's coming up around the pit, that's actually little, little itty bitty things of glass. Almost dust size. sharp. Sweet. Alright, so now I'm going to change the blade out of this. Blade, hole saw, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to put the smaller one in so that we can drill uh, holes for the chains to hang on the little planters. This one is considerably smaller. Uh, these here, whoops, that side. See how that side's like wore out? Because that's the part that actually goes inside of the head. And the last time I used this, I had it upside down and thought, oh crap, I've wasted the blade already. And then I realized that uh, I was just being an idiot. So we're going to clamp this down on there. straight and go grab another bottle. Now on this we're going to drill two holes because we're going to have to have the chain through each side of it. So to avoid having a chain in the front of it, you know, and the same side with the pretty much the label of the thing, just whoops, sorry. Just put two holes on each side of that like that. 50% around the diameter. these things first come off the saw, the edges, both inside and out, are pretty much like razors. They will cut you if you're not careful. So, we are going to use a 120 grit 
sandpaper on an orbital sander and then we're going to use a 300 grit um, each for about five minutes a piece on the inside and the outside of this bottle and uh, we'll get that done real quick on uh, all three pieces or all two actually I cut two bottles so we're going to do all three real quick I got to tell you make sure you're wearing something to cover up your nose and your mouth because breathing the dust that comes out of this thing which is going to get blown at you in your mouth, in your nose, and in your eyes is hazardous to your health. So don't don't play around with this stuff. Just just do it. All right, this is the next step. We've got the holes drilled in it. This edge has been sanded. I mean, it's smooth. You're not gonna cut your hands on this thing. We have our fire clay pebbles. And we've got our clippings here from a wandering Jew plant. And I use these. These are the ones I cut earlier today. Um, they're not even rooted, and they don't need to be because these plants are very hardy, and they're actually going to grow within the rocks. Um, this plant is very hardy. It roots really fast. It's pretty hard to kill. The leaves look pretty cool. White, shades of red, and different shades of green. Okay, so... I'll deal with that later. I'm gonna need some of these. These are fire clay pebbles. You can get them from any hydroponic store. We're gonna wash these off real quick. Pretty important that none of these get down in the garbage disposal. You're gonna have a heck of a time getting them out. Like I almost just did. that drain and now we're gonna make the part that this thing hangs from you'll need a length of chain some needle nose pliers real simple um, just unhook take that length off there uh, let's see here and the same length, All right, we've got that open, and that's actually going to hook to the bottle. So we'll put those together, because we want them to be identical length, otherwise the bottle is going to hang sideways. All right. Close it back up. Now I have two of these holes here, and that is how our bottle is going to hang. So now we just need to put the top back in the bottle, or a cork, whichever, which I'm just now seeing that I don't have either one. So I will be right back. Okay. I found the one that was actually in the bottle originally. So we're going to make sure that's all the way in because this is going to be full of water. You don't want it to leak. All right. So I'm going to take this back off because it's just going to be easier for putting the plants inside it and the stones without the chain hanging out of it. easiest way I've found and the safest way for your sink is just put this right in the drain and this will keep any rocks that fall out from getting in the garbage disposal. We're going to take our clippings from the Wandering Jew and just set them right in the bottle like that. I think three of them is enough. This plant grows so fast, it's going to fill up the, you know, the whole area here within just a couple of months.
Now it's better to have them in there too far in the beginning of this versus too little at the end because then you're going to have to dump the rocks out and start over. Whereas this way, if they're in there too far, you can just pull them out a little bit. They're not rooted yet, so you're not really going to hurt it. Alright, make sure there's no more rocks in the sink before you pull out the bottle. We're going to put some water in it, about halfway up. Now we're going to hook the chain up to it. Now this end, I didn't do it yet, but open up that side, make a loop, just in case the hook that you're hanging it on is bigger around than one of the holes. There we go, in the link here. And clamp it back together. Be careful you don't get your skin in there, because it's going to hurt like hell if you do. And voila. And there is our passive hydroponic system. Now I say passive, basically what's going to happen is as this water goes down, these rocks inside here are very porous and they'll actually wick uh, the water up through the rocks. And it should have gone down in the bottom there. All right, No big deal if it doesn't. But that's it. So I'm going to go hang this up real quick. Okay, this is the last part of this tutorial. And now we're going to make the hurricane lantern. We've got this all sanded nice and smooth. We've got the one big vent hole in the back. It doesn't really have to be this big. I, I do everything overkill. Um, we're going to need a votive candle in glass. I like to use the bigger ones because you can get more wire wrapped around and it'll hold it better. It's going to look like this when we're done with it. And this basically is just going to hang on the inside of the bottle from the chain. So, wire, needle nose pliers, first we're going to start by straightening out the end because this is the part that's going to sit holding the candle up. Bend it as such. Make sure that this piece of metal here is pretty flat against the glass. And then we're going to turn it. Now, we're just going to wrap it around the candle part. And this does not have to be perfect by any means, it just has to go around it twice and then have enough left over to bend it again. So that we can make the hook. Now you can finagle this back into so it looks a little tighter if you want around the candle when you're done. 
top part, just bend it over. And our chain is just going to hang like that. Now obviously, this one needs a little work. Just a little playing and bending with it, and eventually the candle will sit in there straight. Now it's perfect. All right, the other end, just make another loop like that. And this is so that you can hold it and lift the bottle up when you want to um, change out the candle or light it. One more piece. About an inch and a half, two inches. right in the very center of it, just ever so slightly, put a little crease in it. This is so that when gravity is holding it down, it's not going to go through and it's not going to slide off from side to side. Now, simply drop the chain inside of the mouth of the bottle, hold it right there. Hook your chain up to it. Now when you've got the height inside of the bottle that you want the candle, you just put this little bar through the chain and gravity will hold it in place and just let that part hang. And there you have it. Now I made a couple of these already so we're going to take them outside and I'm going to light them up and see what they look like in the yard. This is another variation of the same thing that I did except this one will actually hang. Um, it still has the same holding mechanism for the candle but as you can see the bottom's been taken out. There's a candle in there hanging. And with this one, and I did it on separate chains so that the heat will stop at this one and not transverse into this one and run up the, uh, the chain and heat up whatever you've got it hanging from and possibly start a fire. Alright, let's take these outside. Alright, there they are. They look pretty snazzy. That's right, I said snazzy. I would imagine if I were to make about 20 of these and hang them up all over the trees in my backyard, it's either going to look mega cool or it's going to start a great big fire, one of the two. But we'll find out in a couple days because I'm making a bunch of these. This is the one that's just sitting. And these other ones are hanging. Cool. Forgot to mention putting these out, you do not have to take the candle out, just simply blow in the top of the bottle. And out it goes. This concludes the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. Um, a few people have asked me about the Loud Hailer project out of the big 1800 bottles. Uh, this project is on hold for a bit because the saw that I have, it's not big enough to cut this thing um, on the angle that it needs to be cut on with this in the way. So it's going to happen. I'll find a way. I always do. Um, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you want to uh, get all of our updates, make sure you hit the subscribe button and I will be back in a couple days with another cool tutorial. Thumbs up. Peace out. See ya.